Hello, you're watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. India and Pakistan hit by severe heat wave. Dozens injured in renewed attack on Alexa. Cleaning workers go on strike in the United Kingdom. And audios reveal dictatorship era torture in Brazil. In our first story, India and Pakistan are in the midst of a record-breaking heat wave. Forecasts indicate that temperatures could reach up to 50 degrees Celsius, putting hundreds of millions of people at risk. According to Pakistan's Minister for Climate Change, temperature in the country could rise by 6 to 8 degrees Celsius above average. India's meteorological department has projected a rise of 2 to 4 degrees this week. The country has recorded its hottest March in 122 years, with April set to be the hottest on record. Power demands have increased, sparking fears of a shortage of coal, which provides 70% of India's electricity. The country is experiencing its worst power shortages in six years, with states announcing two to eight hours power cut. This includes the largely desert state of Rajasthan, where outages will impact industrial and even some rural areas. Delhi is also bracing for power cuts, which might disrupt essential services, including hospitals. The capital has witnessed multiple fires in major landfills with toxic smoke affecting local residents. An updated orange level alert has been issued for the states of Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh and Odisha. The current conditions have also led to a 10 to 35 percent decline in crucial wheat yields across India. Experts have stated that the climate crisis has worsened the intensity and frequency of heat waves in South Asia. Poor and working class people will be disproportionately impacted given both a lack of access to cooling facilities and doing heavy work in direct heat. According to a 2021 study in The Lancet, India and Brazil had the highest heat-related mortality in the world. In our next story, at least 42 Palestinians were injured after Israeli occupation forces raided the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound on April 29th. The latest attack took place on the final Friday of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. Occupation forces stormed the compound and fired tear gas and rubber bullets. The Red Crescent has stated that 22 people were hospitalized and that a majority of the injuries had been inflicted on the upper body. Israeli forces have repeatedly stormed the mosque site, injuring over 300 Palestinians in the past two weeks. Palestinians have been resisting these violent incursions with use of stones and fireworks. According to the established rules, while Jewish people may visit the mosque compound, only Muslims can offer prayers. However, extremist Zionists have been conducting provocative visits to the area to mark the Jewish holiday of Passover. The attacks in East Jerusalem are taking place alongside a surge of violence in the occupied West Bank. On April 27, 18-year-old Ahmed Masad was shot and killed during a raid in the city of Jenin. The Palestinian Islamic Jihad stated that Masad was its member and was shot during confrontations with the Israeli forces. Less than 24 hours before, 20-year-old Ahmed Ibrahim Ovedit was shot in the head during a raid in Jericho. The Israeli military has ramped up operations in the West Bank, especially in and around Jenin. Over 50 Palestinians have reportedly been killed in the occupied territory in 2022 alone. Next, we go to the United Kingdom, where cleaning staff employed by the Churchill Contracting Company have launched an 11-day strike. Hundreds of workers walked out this week in their struggle for a £15 an hour wage. The action has been organized by the National Union of Rail, Maritime and Transport Workers, or the RMT. Workers have performed the crucial task of keeping the railways clean and safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite this, they are paid only £8.9 an hour. Churchill has refused to increase wages despite making £39 million in profits in 2020. The division which employs the workers alone earned a profit of £11 million in 2021. Despite this, the cleaning staff are only paid the minimum wage. Moreover, workers have also been impacted by a growing cost of living crisis. Prices are rising at their fastest in three decades and the inflation rate stands at 7%. Writing in the Morningstar, RMT leader Eddie Dempsey stated that workers were £1,000 worse off now than a year ago. 
The union has also raised other demands, including company sick pay. They have also demanded free travel for cleaning staff across the network. This benefit is already provided to other railway workers. And finally, Brazil is witnessing renewed calls for transparency and accountability regarding the military dictatorship. Earlier this month, journalist Miriam Litao published a series of audio recordings from the era. These proved that Brazil's superior military court was fully aware of the torture of political prisoners. Researchers have argued that the armed forces might have a black box of other crimes of the regime. While President Dilma Rousseff took major steps to enable the disclosure of documents, key materials still remain out of public reach. This is due to resistance and obstruction by the armed forces. Here is a video by Brazil de Fato on this issue. Let's have a look. The cases of torture during Brazil's military dictatorship gained new shapes after the release of audio recordings from the Superior Military Court sessions recorded between 1975 and 1985. Excerpts from the 10,000 hours of recordings were published on April 10th by journalist Miriam Leiton, herself a torture victim. The following testimony was given on June 4th, 1977, in which an army general talks about the torture suffered by a political prisoner. Desejei desprezar sua, sua, sua atitude, pois estava grávida de três meses, ao ser presa. Tinha receio de perder o filho. O que veio, e, 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 o que veio acontecer? Dia 7 de abril, na determinação da UPA. A lot was already known about the brutality and cowardness of torture committed against political prisoners, but the release of the audio recordings recalls the facts in a new shape. It is not news, including the audio recordings. Many lawyers attended these sessions and knew about the testimonies. Now, the big question is the release of them, is that it became public and through audio. The National Congress has reverberated the impact of the revelations. Senator Humberto Costa, a member of the Senate Human Rights Commission, sent a request to the Superior Military Court asking for the court's audio recordings on torture. This accusation is particularly relevant because it reaffirms and confirms that audio recordings from that period show that the Minister of the Superior Military Court knew about these torture acts. Also, it shows that little was done to prevent them from happening. The survey on repression began clandestinely still during the dictatorship years. Recently, the National Truth Commission, which lasted from 2011 to 2014, blamed more than 300 people for torture and other human rights violations, but it failed to change the armed forces' understanding of their own responsibilities. Despite all the work developed by the Truth Commission, there are still documents and sources undisclosed to the public, mainly due to the behavior of our military institution, which has public servants. It blocks the access to the memory institutionally defended as a legacy. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.